This is Mark Tobias at Otter Products uh, in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, they're better known as Otter Box Company. And today we're talking to Adam Havens, who's an engineer for the company, mechanical engineer by trade. And Adam, I wanted to talk about your products and why your company has really cut a niche into the market. Um, and for cases, for smartphones, for portable electronics. Um, what's unique about what you guys do? Well, I think really what's unique about OtterBox is that we were uh, the first company to really bring about some of the more protective solutions for the electronic devices. A uh, few different variations of our, of our uh, product as far as level of protection and um, amount of layers that you'll get with that protection. And we're definitely seeing a lot of people following suit, seeing the success we're having and following suit. But I think what's mainly special is kind of that we were the innovators bringing about the that style of protection for the electronic devices. So do you have a broad range of products as far as levels of protection? Yeah, our, our uh, main levels are gonna be the Defender series, which is gonna uh, be polycarbonate uh, close to the device wrapped in a silicone, and then that'll come with a holster, uh, belt clip with the clip stand on it. We have a Reflex, which is a sliding case. It's gonna be a little bit more exclusive for real hot devices. And then uh, commuter series is going to be kind of the more for on the go, a little bit less protection, a little bit more sleek, uh, slide in, in and out of your pocket a little bit uh, easier. And then we have an impact, which is just straight silicone. It's got real nice coring in it to dissipate the impact and uh, is also a pretty cool solution. How do you test your products against damage to smartphones are pretty expensive today. You're talking retail six, seven hundred bucks. Yep. Um, how do you, first of all, should everybody have a protective case? Oh yeah, I mean, I definitely understand people that do like uh, having naked devices, but it is just one thing, or just a risk you have to take take if you do like it, like, like it without protection. Um, I, I always like to have some sort of outer case on my device just because I'm a little bit rougher with them. So especially Defender Series is great for uh, activities outdoors and whenever you're feeling like you might be a little bit less, a little bit more clumsy. What's the testing criteria for your different levels of devices? Uh, we test all of them actually to the same criteria. We do a lot of in-house in testing uh, as far as just throwing devices around with our cases on them, with, without the case on them just to see for comparison, but as far as technical testing, we uh, we do drop on all on all six sides and uh, five drops each, and just make sure that calls won't be dropped, no damage to the device, no damage to the case. From from how high do you drop them? I believe that one is three feet onto uh, hardwood, and then according to certain devices or certain requirements by a carrier OEM. Sometimes we'll make we'll do further testing at higher heights. So do do you interface with engineering the labs, for example, with Verizon? Do you in, do you interface with them as far as testing criteria for the cases that you sell to them? Um, some of our customers will require certain levels of testing, but basically we'll just be passing off a document from a third party that says that that testing criteria has been passed. It won't be. We, we won't be working together for, for to meet those testing criteria. So do you send your your all your cases off to labs to test or do you do Correct. it internally? Both. We will do a lot of internal testing and that's that's where a lot of the even more extreme testing will happen and then always your standard standard testing that is required by certain customers will, will happen. What about environmental uh, moisture, water, heat? Um, as far as moisture and water, we uh, do not claim any on any of our series at this point besides just our dry box series, which a phone will not be functional through. We have some old armor series that uh, are a little bit harder to find nowadays, but pretty big, pretty big cases and very much waterproof. I think all of them are, I'm not sure what the depth is on them, but our current line that we're focusing on is not considered waterproof. Uh, definitely has openings to the device where water can enter, but uh, the main focus is kind of keeping it 
as slim as possible and really focusing on the drop and shock protection because that's what most users are saying that they need at this point. How easy you, uh, we talked about your Defender series. Is this plastic fairly sturdy, it won't break, it won't fracture? Correct. I mean, uh, in the right circumstances, any of these plastics will fracture for sure. But uh, we try to build them very robustly for everyday use and for cycle testing, uh, cycling, things like the belt clip, open and close, making sure that that's going to prove adequate cycling, things like the engagement tooth on a holster like this to make sure that it'll get plenty of cycles out of it before it, before it actually yields. And our customer service is wonderful. If this did get caught up on something and an excessive amount of force did break it, uh, very easy to get a new one. Um, what should the consumer know when, when they're looking uh, in uh, Best Buy, Verizon, T-Mobile, all the shops that carry accessories? What should they understand and look for in protective case design? Um, I mean, I don't know if a lot of them you can tell just from all the packaging, but uh, really full functionality is what I'll always look for. There's there's definitely certain accessories out there that will limit some of your functionality, and it could be something that somebody doesn't necessarily need that functionality, but something we're very much focused on is just making sure every single feature of that phone is not hindered by, by our solutions. So, uh, but I mean... Kind of, it's, it's just according to the end user, whether you're looking for style, more protection. That's why we, uh, you know, have our broad range of series to kind of make sure we cater to as many of those demographics as possible. You make cases for smartphones, mm -hmm. for iPads, yep. <coughs> for, for Zoom tablets. Yep. Um, is Are you expanding your tablet line? Uh, I don't know if I could comment on that. I'm not really quite sure. Uh, I think that the, the tablet market is is definitely growing, and whether that's a viable market yeah. for us to continue in is, right. is a whole other story. So, uh, I think some of them have done done very well for us. So I wouldn't be surprised to see more of them in the future. What other what other case what other electronics are you making cases for? Uh, it's just according to the situation, whether we have a business to business opportunity, whether something looks like it's going to be a big deal and have a good life cycle. It's definitely one thing we deal with is all the electronics having such a short lifestyle mm -hmm. life cycle, especially smartphones, to the point where you have to be there on the day of launch or, or sure, forget yeah, it. Yep, just the, you know a year life cycle is very tough for to mm -hmm. produce an accessory for after something's already hit the shelves. So, but it's good for business too. Yep, yep, got it. It's, there's a lot a lot of projects that's for sure. Have you run into any shielding? Uh, RF shielding problems? No, we actually haven't haven't yet. We're uh, trying to expand as much testing as possible for that, but we we have not encountered a lot of issues. And when we have encountered issues, we've had uh, complaints. At least we have not been able to reproduce them. So, what's your most difficult design problem? Um, I would say a lot of them uh, just kind of continuing to innovate and uh, continuing to be on top of the market. Uh, I, I really think that bringing back some sort of waterproof solution is going to be a, a great great way to go. But I mean, we have we have a wonderful uh, our base is covered as far as demographics. A lot of the design problems and things that are really going to be more difficult are when we see new technology, mm -hmm. and we're trying to accommodate them in our current fashion of designing. Uh, but we try to keep on top of it and make sure that we're well aware of any new technology that's being that might be coming so that we can accommodate it as it as it does come around. Cool. Adam, thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you.